Hi, my name is Samar Abbas. I'm going to show you how to write Workflow as code using Go SDK for Temporal. So let's get started. I'm starting with an empty repository to cover a few of the prerequisites. I already have Go set up on this machine. I am going to be using VS Code as the ID with the right Go setup. And I already have temporal Docker server running in the background. Let's first initialize Go modules for the project. Open it up in VS Code. First thing you want to do is create an application to host workflow and activity implementations. For that, create like the main.go file. Create the main function. At this point, let's add the dependency uh, to the temporal Go SDK. You can do that by running go get command for go.temporal.io slash temporal. This installs the temporal SDK. Temporal uses zap logging. So let's first initialize the zap logger that we are going to use to spin up a temporal client. We use tally for all our metric needs. So next use the tally and create like a no op scope, which we can use to bootstrap the client. Next step is to create the temporal client which can knows how to talk to the server in the background. So we provide like an API new client on the temporal SDK. The things that you need to Initialize a client is the host port that the client needs to connect to the server. As part of the client SDK, we provide a default host port, which knows how to connect to the server running on your local machine. When you start the server, it automatically creates like a default domain and the cl client exposes like a default domain name constant, which knows how to use the default domain for your client. Use the no op scope that we initialize above to initialize the metric scope as the client option. That's all you need to create a service client. The next step is to initialize the temporal worker. which takes in the service client that we initialized above. It also needs the name of the task list, which it listens on for any workflow and activity tasks. And then you specify the SAP logger which was initialized above in the worker options. And that's all which is needed to create a worker. Now let's create your uh, workflow and activity implementations. Let's call create a workflow method by the name of my workflow. Temporal uh, workflow are just like any other Go functions. The only thing is it needs to have workflow.context as the first parameter and should return an error. Now let's create like an activity implementation. 
fantastic by the name of my activity my activities are also like any other go function which takes a regular go context and then returns an error in this case now the next thing is let's add these activities and workflows to the worker that we just created using the register workflow api provided by the worker you can register the workflow function that we just created below and now in a similar way use the register activity function to register the activity that we created below now both the workflow and activities are registered with the temporal worker now all you need to do is call start on the worker which start connects to the temporal service and start listening for tasks and just block this application so we know the process doesn't end that's it um, now we uh, that's all which is needed to host your workflows and activities in a temporal worker which is connected to the temporal server running in the background now let's try to run this application so we can see the worker is started and listening on this task list that we provided just to make sure the application is running correctly you can run the docker tct uh, the temporal uh, cli which we provide by the name of tctl and try to describe the task list and then you can see that there is one worker which is connected successfully with the server so that's all which was needed to host a temporal workflow an activity and host it in a worker process now let's try to convert this application into a real application what we are going to do is like uh, write a greetings workflow which calls two activities get user which returns the name of a user and then send greeting which sends a greeting to that user so let's create a folder to put all of our activities implementations and then another folder to put our workflows let's start with the activities define a get user dot go file and then in this file define an activity get user this activity does not return uh, takes any parameters and returns a string or error and modify let's return temporal as the name of the user and nil as error that's it you have a get user activity now create another file for send greeting activity or just define a function called send greeting this activity takes user as a parameter and then for now it all it does is just print some message b 
greeting sent to user. That's it. So now we have both our acti activities defined. Now let's write the greetings workflow, which uses these two activities that we just defined. Create the greetings.go file. Define the workflow method. Let's call it greetings. As you can see, the workflow method takes workflow.context as the first parameter. The very first thing you want to do is create your activity options. So the way you create activity options is you use the workflow.activity options API. There are two mandatory options, scheduled to start. Let's set that to scheduled one hour. And start to close, let's set this one to be also one hour. And then you use the with activity options API to set these options on the workflow context. Next step is let's schedule our first activity, which is get user. This activity uh, does not take any parameter, but returns a result, which we are reading in the user variable. Then let's schedule the next activity, send greeting which takes one parameter and we are going to pass the result of first activity as input to the second one. Then we use the get API, although this API activity does not return any result, but just to wait for the second activity to complete. At this point, when both activities are done, the workflow is finished. So let's print a message. Greetings workflow complete and then let's tag the log with the user that this greeting was sent to that's it at this point we have the greetings workflow which calls two activities sequentially now let's go back to our worker let's remove these dummy activities that we created before and then replace it with the new one Register the greetings workflow. Now register the two activities, get user. And send greeting. That's it. Now the worker is hosting the new workflows and activity that we just created. Let's try to run this application. You can see the worker is now correctly started. Then let's try to start a greeting workflow using TCTL library that we just provided. Then use the workflow start command for TCTL. This starts the workflow and it if it returns a run ID, which means the workflow greetings is successfully started. Now, if you go back to the worker, you can see the greetings workflow was started successfully. It scheduled the first activity get user. And after the first activity was completed, it scheduled the second send greeting activity. And which printed our uh, message. And then the workflow completed successfully.
you can go back use the tctl to list your workflow executions and you can also run the show workflow show command to look at the history for that workflow so this demonstrates that how easy it is to write like a simple workflow using temporal i hope this was useful for you thank you for watching goodbye